congratulations, you made it. Welcome to another great day. Life is for living. Welcome to part three of a five part series entitled 101 Sales Truths They Don't Want You to Know. Uh, it is so peaceful and so calm. It is just, mm, I'm so glad I found this spot, I'll tell you. If you've not watched part one and part two, perfectly fine. What I'll be doing is putting together a package which will consist of a book, five videos, and some more material. The five, the five videos will have the sales truths scrolling underneath. So not only will you be able to hear the sales truths, but you'll be able to also see the word as well. So that's reinforcing things for you, helping the journey become a smoother one in terms of getting used to this information and putting it to practice. We'll also be doing some role plays as well for those that get their hands on the package once it's released. Inside the package, there will be a link which will be 100% free for you to access for those that have the package that will enable them to join my group which is called Rule Your World where great people connect and do great things. It's a powerful mastermind group and you wouldn't want to miss that basically because you are going somewhere to happen and with like-minded people coming together moving in the same direction wow the power that comes with that the synergy the compound interest that comes with that is off the chain so what we're going to do is go in we're going to continue now from 40 to 60 okay let's do this so number 40 all values are considered equal until someone points out the difference wow all values are considered equal until someone points out the difference you know when you point out the difference what you're doing now is you're going in on something and you are literally kind of like unlocking, unfolding, unpacking something. You're going through all of the, around all of the dynamics. It's like you're taking a, a um, 3D approach when you're explaining the benefits and the features of a product or a service that you are offering to somebody. 41. What people believe strongly enough they act upon. Strongly enough, they act upon belief, act, the action, the mind, believe, and act. Body, mind, mind, body, mind, body, conditioning the body to the capacity where it just has to follow through. 42. Never make a claim you can't back up with facts. Wow, there's been times when in the past where I have attempted to defend things which I've believed for the reality of the matter was. I couldn't prove it. You know, um, a couple of weeks back, I did some deep diving, deep within, and discovered that there were certain beliefs that I was standing on. And I had to ask myself, where did these beliefs really come from? I knew that I was responsible responsible for the beliefs but how did I allow myself to adopt an idea and then make that idea become a belief and then make that belief become a platform for me to stand on and use as a, uh, um, a stepping stone because once you stand on a belief that belief then comes a ground which you then kind of like set up a um, you build a kind of like a fortress around a belief. It's like, right, I'm putting my flag here and this is what I'm going to um, use as a platform um, because I feel secure here, I feel safe here. Um, I have certain needs that need fulfilling and this belief fulfills them needs. Now, when I went deeper into looking at certain beliefs that I had, because I've had to 
kind of like accept the fact that that belief was there yep so I embrace it I'm like thank you because that belief took me somewhere and it's helped me to also get more knowledge wisdom and understanding about how stuff works because life is lived looking forward but only understood looking back I appreciate that but look, looking at the science of how stuff works it's brilliant and once we get the science of how stuff works it's such a lovely thing but that only comes when we decide to invest in ourselves take that time out disconnect from the external unattach ourselves from certain things and then go within the kingdom of God is within you so these beliefs where did they come from okay then so I was at a place at a certain time in my life asking certain questions and I was in an environment and certain things were shared with me from the outside in um, I decided to adopt those things thinking about them things those thoughts then thoughts now became a thing and then that thing became a belief because I was thinking about it so much and then I appreciated and I adopted um, and practiced and I really liked everything about the information so I thought you know what I'm gonna stand on this information so that information now turns into a belief and then from there it becomes a stepping stone into other things other doors are open branches um, it, be it becomes a root of a thought and then branches come from that root of thinking so now in your mind you've got all of these different pathways neuro pathways and they're all leading to different things and different worlds so to speak so I'll park right there. That's what arrived from me doing this inner work, true inner work. So, um, beautiful, that's 42. <laughs> 43, it makes little difference what you believe to be true unless you can prove it to your prospect. It makes little difference to believe. It makes little difference what you believe to be true unless you can prove it to your prospect. You know, communicating as in the situation the other day right I was speaking to a phenomenal person and we're on the phone and when I was speaking it's like I totally forgot that the person I was speaking to wasn't me so I was like basically sharing information assuming that that person would just get what I'm saying without breaking things down and getting into intricate detail and painting a picture so that person could get more knowledge wisdom and understanding okay so that was just my experience so you can imagine being in front of a prospect and it's like you have a product they want a product and you know 100% how this product works and the benefits that come from this product You've identified what the customer needs, this prospect needs. Um, however, to show that customer why what you have is going to work wonders for them, that's another story altogether. So in demonstrating, in using flavor, color, and detail in your language and certain words, and certain um, using scenarios or testimonials, um, you will be able to paint a picture and also show your potential client the strength of this product or service that you have. And once they can see, if a person says, ah, I see, then you know with the mind's eye, they've got a clear picture of a thing, okay? So we look with our eyes, we see with our mind. Moving on. 44. Prospects expect salespeople to make claims for what they are selling, but they are impressed when someone else makes or endorses those claims. So I was kind of alluding to that in 43, when I was speaking about testimonials and stuff. If a person's looking for a product to buy nowadays, they tend to find out what other people have to say about it. So for example, they'll go to, they'll go online, maybe go to Google or go to Amazon, and go to YouTube and type in fridge freezer reviews and then press enter and some details will pop up of certain places that sell fridge freezers and people that have left reviews on certain fridge freezers 
and a person could end up on an Amazon, um, web, uh, an Amazon site in the fridge freezer section, clicking on the reviews, scrolling down, only to see a review left by Mr. Smith speaking about how impressed Mr. he is with his fridge freezer, with his Bosch fridge freezer. And Mr. Smith explains how all of the functions and the, the way that the shelves are displayed and the way the lights come on and fade away. Just the whole experience of using this fridge freezer has brought Mr. Smith so much delight that he has to scream about it by leaving not only a in-depth review but a five star on it as well. How powerful is that? Now I'd be I would gravitate to a review, a product rather, like that, if a person leaves a review like that. So reviews are powerful. So in your services, if you can, um, if people leave reviews, do you share them reviews with others on your website, on your blog, you know? This will make you become much more believable um, as a brand, so to speak, as a person, or it will make your product or service much more believable. Awesome stuff. 45. As trust in you and confidence in the value of what you are offering rise, fear of buying disappears. Wow. As trust in you and confidence in the value of what you are offering rise, fear of buying disappears. So there's some clues there. Making sure that you are authentic in what you are doing, your approach, showing interest in this person's needs. Showing that person that you are there to make sure that that person is taken care of to the best of your ability is so important and when you're sharing the information about your products and service as well when you dive straight in and you're knowledgeable you know your product you know your service and you're dealing with the client in a respectful manner you're on a winner right, right there the whole experience becomes an effortless one it's no longer about the money so to speak but it's about the whole experience how that person feels um, about you and the product 46 always assure buyers of the wisdom of their choices because you care and you want to make sure that your client is happy after having that point of contact with you after exchanging their time their energy money they want to know that what they've received is a box ticker 47 concentrate on results not on activities to concentrate on results and not activities means that we have to identify exactly what that client wants. So to ask the right questions, Mr. Clark's most favorite men, who, what, why, where, and when. You can pop in a how as well. Starting your questions with those words can be a great help. 48. True long-lasting enthusiasm is born on the inside. What's the reciprocal to that? False short-lasting enthusiasm is born on the outside. <laughs> 49. Enthusiasm grows when you focus on solutions and opportunities instead of problems and circumstances. See that? Where focus goes energy flows 50 most of the things that can go wrong in sales happen when a salesperson's mouth is open 
51. <laughs> there are four areas where you can focus. Self, company, product or customer. If you focus on the first three, your customer is outnumbered three to one. 52. To be a top sales professional enjoying long range success, you must be an intelligent investor of your time, talent, resources and energies. Strong. 53. Marketing strategy is what gets you to the customer's door in the best possible light. Sales strategy is what you do when you are inside. So making sure that you're very well prepared before even looking for um, the decision maker. There was a time where I would be doing telesales. Here's an example. So the time when I'd be doing um, telesales, I'd be inside of a room, um, sitting down on my desk with a telephone to hand, a database in front of me, and the database had information like customer's name, company, the best times to call, when they were called last, what the outcome was, and I'd follow up based on that information. Now, to understand who you're going to be speaking to is crucially important because you need to make sure that you bring the right equipment with you. So to speak about, to mention names is crucially important and to also speak about uh, a thread of conversation that's happened previously is crucial as well. And you just have to make sure you're prepared. Now, there was a common thing that would happen where you pick up the phone and get into the person with the bag, so to speak, the decision maker. There's a process that takes place. You normally have to go through the gatekeeper before you can get to the decision maker. So dealing with the gatekeeper, you have to make sure that you have an art for dealing with the gatekeeper. And then dealing with the decision maker, you have to make sure that you've got yourself prepared and ready to deal with the decision maker as well. So that's very important. Getting in is one thing, and then doing what you need to do is another. So are we really focusing on just getting somewhere or are we focusing on the results? Because if we go straight to the gatekeeper, we know, sorry, if we go straight to, not sorry, I do apologize, but excuse me. If we go straight to the decision maker, we know that we have to deal with the gatekeeper. Sometimes the difference between you asking for the decision maker and then you waffling um, with a person that's not even going to be making any decisions but is you know, a gatekeeper having to pass you on to somebody else that has to pass you on to somebody else that has to pass you on to somebody else you can potentially not only lose um, clients you can also um, lose a lot of time a lot of energy in making these phone calls so going straight to the end of the thing and then doing what you have to do is a smart way of operating cut into the chase. Lovely. Fifty-four. Ah, oh, and birds. Fifty-four. You may have to take whatever comes your way in life, but you may, you have to go after what you want in order to be a sales winner. I'll read that again. You may have to take whatever comes your way in life, but you may have to go after what you want in order to be a sales winner. Yeah. Life happens. There's many twists. There's many turn, turns. As many of us sometimes learns. There's mountains. There's dips. There's valleys. But it's how you set your ship. And once you set your ship, once you set that sail and you're going somewhere to happen, the things that are inevitable that happen in life will help you 
to reach that destination because you're going somewhere to happen. There will be setbacks. But get up and keep pressing forward. There will be setbacks. Just remember, a few years ago, I started reading a book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. The reason why I say I started reading it is because I've completed it. Hello, doggy. Hiya. <laughs> I've completed the book and I've read it on numerous occasions and I still read it up this very day. Sometimes when I go for a run, I will be listening to the audio book version and there's a section inside the book and it speaks about, there's a few sections in the book, but there's one section in particular um, and it's called The Definite Chief Aim. And in The Definite Chief Aim, basically you write out a statement to yourself and that statement is who you are, what you want, how you're going to get that and what you're going to give back in return. Okay, I have a definite chief aim, it's within me, it's in my subconscious mind doing its thing. I have a printed out version on card, I have all different printed out versions around me. And at times in my life when I have been in situations that have seemed bleak, when it's looked like the end, I have that script, I, I keep that vision alive. At the end of my definite chief aim, it says, I ask not for divine providence or for more riches, but for more wisdom to use wisely the riches I receive that birth in the form of the power to control and direct my mind to whatever ends I desire. And I can see the power of having a definite chief aim. So it's really important for you to have a definite chief aim in life, something to work around. Otherwise, it's like you're just existing and you're just accepting all sorts of things that happen in your life. And it's like you're here, but not really like living, so to speak. That's just me and my um, experience. So I, if you haven't read the book, Think and Grow Rich, do get your hands on it. I'll leave a link to it. You can download a copy of it. Um, but it's one of the best books I've ever read. And what's beautiful about it is when you decide to follow the principles inside the book, you'll be going through in life and then stuff will happen. You'll be like, hold on a sec. Thinking Great Rich will actually pop up and you'll go back to the book and you'll see parts of the book basically come alive. And you'll be like, oh my days. So then what happens is your belief instantly shoots up and then you start to become much more aware, which is a key word, become much more aware of how stuff works and you'll be like oh, I need more books like this where can I find them <laughs> and then you'll just be getting into these books and you'll be just lapping them up and you'll be like finding places to go to where no one can disturb you so you can just sit down like that and get into the nuts and bolts of things so um, yeah 55 price alone is really a key factor in buying decisions instead the key factor in any buying decision is the perceived value to be gained by the buyer. Wow. Price alone, I'll read that again. Price alone is really a key factor in buying decisions. Instead, the key factor in a buying decision is the perceived value to be gained by the buyer. That's very important, you know. That's extremely important, in fact. Extremely important. 56. In a crowded marketplace, all other things being equal, the one with the most information who knows how to use it wins. So a person that can elaborate and paint a picture and actually bring that product to life the best is the winner. 57. Let your questions do the selling for you. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Let your questions do the selling for you. Wow. I've just got a load of things going off in my mind as I'm reading out these sales truths. Right. Tempted. Tempted to go on one. I will stay focused. 58. Listen, people, into buying instead of 
talking your way out of the sale. <laughs> that goes back to if you open your mouth, you could mess things up. Keep it closed as much as possible so they can listen more. Fifty nine. Get your prospects to openly share how they feel about what they have seen and heard so you will all so you will always know where you stand. And we're gonna park on sixty. Well done. Your attitude towards sales as a profession determines your selling actions, attitude, how you position yourself and how you see yourself. How you position yourself, how you see yourself and what you are about. Are you really about helping people? Are you there to be that bridge in order to help a person have that experience that they are really happy with, extremely happy with, that service, that product that they're looking for? Will you do the best that you can to help your prospect, your client have their needs met? Will you bring out the best in that prospect or are you in it for selfish gain or oh, I just want money just want money uh, there's something about longevity when a person goes home after purchasing a product or a service they're going to be left with an experience and a product or a service and then they're gonna speak about the whole experience because the reality of the matter is the product and the service and you the salesperson it's all one thing all interconnected two people can sell the same item exactly the same item but how one the, the buyer experiences one item and how a buyer experiences the other item has a lot to do with the attitude of the salesperson they bought it from. So on that note, what I would like you to do, a big well done by the way, now that you're in a place where you are ready to receive the information I was speaking about beforehand, you'll find the information on this page above the video or below the video. That information will take you to the package. Once you download the package, you'll be able to get your, you can use all the information as you wish, as you want, it's entirely up to you. It's just my way of saying thank you and I appreciate you. Enjoy the information, use the information, help somebody. Do something different today, in fact. Do something different today. A random act of kindness today. Treat someone today. Say something to someone today that's really nice. If there's a person that's been doing your head in, say, you know what? What a waste of time and energy. Why am I drinking this poison and expecting the other person to die? What does it profit? You know what? I forgive myself, man, for being this way. I owe myself much better than this. You know what? I'm going to call that person right now and say, you know what? I appreciate you. Thank you. I've been terrible in the past. I've acknowledged certain things about my behaviour. But I just want you to know that I love you and I forgive you. I forgive you. That just came out that way. So, have an amazing day. Keep up the great work.
That's it from me, Kevin Clark, believing in you. And remember, stay focused. Remember, help yourself to the information. The details are inside this video. I've got the top right at the bottom. God bless.